on Thanksgiving than right here, right now at a football game. There's just certain things that go together. You know, the turkey, the family, the tradition, football, and we have it all today. I learned a lot of things playing in Minnesota for 11 years. And one of those things might surprise you. In football, kindness is an underrated quality. I won't hurt you. Hey, I'm serious. We're all one big happy family. This dog's gotta eat. When you have someone in your family over to your place for the holidays, you want to treat them right. <laughs> this is my Thanksgiving welcoming committee. Since this is the first time that the Vikings have hosted a Thanksgiving game, I figured that we could use some help to get this done right. So, team, what are some of your ideas? Taylor? How about we put decorations in the visitor's locker room? Yeah, that's a great idea. How about famous Minnesota Ludafisk on the Patriots' sideline? For the nice man in the hoodie. Ooh, I tried it. No. How about you, Victor? Any ideas? He hasn't said a word since Gary Anderson missed that field goal. Kick is up. It is mm. no oh, good. God. Too soon, kid. Uh. What if we hold hands and say a prayer for a good game? Where both teams try really, really hard. Mac Jones, he throws it. Caught. Touchdown. Patriots have the lead. Nah. <laughs> He's going to heave one to J.J. He caught it. The Vikings are going to win. That's what I'm talking about. Sound the horn. Let's dig in. <laughs> And from Hall of Famer John Randall and some adorable friends, a friendly welcome on a 35-degree evening, U.S. Bank Stadium, downtown Minneapolis, and the Vikings hosting Thanksgiving for the first time in their 62-year history. They're 8-2, and, and they may have the best receiver in the business, Justin Jefferson, and tonight they take on the NFL sack leader, Matthew Judon, the 6-4 New England Patriots. It's NBC's Sunday Night Football on Thanksgiving night. So glad you were with us. Thanks for having us in your home on Thanksgiving. Mike Tirico, Tony Dungy, Jason Garrett, Melissa Stark coming up here in a bit. One and three, wobbly start for the Patriots. Now they've won five of their last six. The offense is not spectacular, but what's your read on what the Patriots can do now that they're in the race? No, you're right. It's a new offense. They haven't found their footing yet, but I think they're in great shape because of their defense. These last six games, giving up less than 12 points a game. That's Bill Belichick football. That defense is pretty smothering. So, Jason, if we were in the Mall of America last week talking to Viking fans, they'd say, beat Dallas 9-1, and one, maybe the best team in the NFL. Then they lose 40-3 to three to Dallas. And around the dinner tables in the Twin Cities, it's, are we any good? Hey, hey, Mike, there's a lot of doubters out there, but the short week came at a perfect time for the Vikings. They want to get that bad taste from the Cowboys' loss out of their mouth as quickly as they can. The key is they have to play the game on their own terms. They got to get back to playing. When they had that seven game winning streak, they played a certain style. On defense, go get the quarterback and take the ball away. On offense, run it. Play action pass. And oh, by the way, get the ball to Dalvin <laughs> Cook and Justin Jefferson, and good things happen. You know how people rest and get on the couch? Not these folks. They are loud. They are ready to go, and so are we. Big names should be a terrific game. The Vikings and the Patriots, the final course for you on Thanksgiving night, 2022. Sunday Night Football on Thanksgiving night is brought to you by Hyundai. It's your journey. National Football League. to honor America with the performance of our national anthem. Please welcome Minnesota native, multi-platinum songwriter and national recording artist, Caitlin Smith. Oh, say can you see by the dawn's early light what so proudly we at the twilight's last gleaming whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fight where the red 
parts we watched were so gallantly streaming. And the rockets rattling, the bombs bursting in air, got you proof through the night that our flag was still there. Oh, say dawns that star-spangled banner and way O'er the land of the free And the home of the brave Great rendition of the anthem on this great American holiday, this day of seeing family and friends. And we have a reunion between the head coaches. For more on that, again, Melissa Stark. Mike, tonight it is teacher versus student with these two head coaches. Bill Belichick drafted Kevin O'Connell in the third round in 2008. O'Connell went on to play five NFL seasons. His first was with the Patriots as the backup to Tom Brady and Matt Castle. Belichick said he remembers O'Connell as a rookie just trying to stay afloat. But as a peer, he said O'Connell is smart, conscientious, has surrounded himself with good people, adapted well, and his team plays hard. O'Connell, now in his first year as head coach of the Minnesota Vikings, said he still has his old notebooks from his Patriot team meetings and refers back to them. He can still rattle off all the Belichickisms like do your job and ignore the noise. He said, I tried to replicate that here, but I have to be authentic to myself. I have to be me. Tonight, he becomes the third man to have played for Belichick to go on and coach against him. And Melissa Belichick in New England chasing Buffalo and Miami. Bills won today. Pats play them twice in the last six weeks. The Vikings running away with the North. Detroit's loss means they can clinch their first division title in five years as early as next week. Love the traditions here. The skull chant and the tradition of sounding the Gallahorn at U.S. Bank Stadium before kickoff handled by St. Paul's own Suni Lee, the gold medal gymnast in the all-around for Team USA in Tokyo 16 months ago. And that counts as blowing the Gallahorn. And here we go. <laughs> New England won the toss, defers the option of the second half. Nick Folk is kicking off because punter Jake Bailey's on injured reserve. Panay Wanwu has two career kickoff returns. He's back to receive. Hope you've had a great day. Time for the final course, Thanksgiving 2022. Off we go from Minneapolis. And it's Wanwu from the two. Trying to get to this edge on his right. And what a tackle at the 20-yard line by Marcus Jones, the man who made special teams headlines for the Patriots on Sunday. Let's meet the Minnesota offense. Kirk Cousins, Michigan State. Dalvin Cook, Florida State. Justin Jefferson, go Tigers. Adam Thielen, Minnesota State, Mankato. KJ Osborne, do you? TJ Hawkinson, Iowa. Blake Brandle, Oregon State University. Ezra Cleveland, Boise State. Garrett Bradbury, NC State. Ed Ingram, LSU. Brian O'Neill, Pitt. Right, the big story is the opposite tackle. Christian Darasaw's out. First NFL start for Blake Brandle. Game's on right away from the 20th toss to Dalvin Cook. To the left side goes Cook. He'll get about three yards. Toss coming from Kirk Cousins, already his fifth year here in Minnesota, and this is a new system for him. He's led some big comeback wins, including the Buffalo game a couple of weeks ago. But a lot of picks for the first 10 games of the season for Cousins and seven sacks last week. A little up tempo here, Mike. Second and six, Tony from the 24. It is thrown out and complete to the backup tight end, Johnny Munch, will take it to the 37 yard line. A first down and a gain of 13. 
Kirk Cousins looks awfully comfortable in the pocket here. Protection is clean. It's always good to get that completion early on in the ball game, get rid of those cobwebs, get the blood flowing. Munt converts it for a first down. And you know what I noticed, Mike? Matthew Judon on the right side for the first time going against that new left tackle. Green cadence of the 37 out quick. There he is, Justin Jefferson. Gain of about eight yards. He's tackled on the side by Jonathan Jones. We have a penalty marker down with Alex Kemp, our referee. He's coming right over where Jefferson was entangled with the top corner for the Patriots. Lip readers, you saw him say face mask. Now we'll open his mic and say it. Personal foul, face mask, defense number 31, 15 yard penalty, push out. And that'll take the Vikings to the Patriots side of midfield. The right hand part of the formation, Justin Jefferson gets off coverage, and they, they throw like a little bubble route to him. And you see the physicalness of Jefferson at the end of the down. You see where Jones gets the hand in there at the top of it, pulls it a little bit. It's a good call. Grab and twist. Terry McCauley says yes. Three time Super Bowl referee with us back in the studio. Happy Thanksgiving to Terry. From the 41, here is Cousins. For the pattern, he escapes and throws on the run wide open. Adam Thielen, Mr. Minnesota, to the 25 yard line, a gain of 16. And the Vikings on the move on this opening drive. Four-man rush off of uh, just basic zone coverage. Bentley coming. Nowhere to go. Cousins does a great job moving around, creating space, and finding Thielen. It's a Viking team that has been outstanding in opening drives here this season. The 25. It's a run play. Technically, <laughs> Jefferson can throw. He does to Thielen. First down. At the 13 yard line. Justin Jefferson's second pass of the year. He's completed both. Hey, Mike, this is part of the opening script, and Justin Jefferson can truly do it all. This pass is decidedly behind. You could see something was going to happen here. They've been walking through this thing all week long, dying to call it. Leave it to Jefferson to execute it like that, right between the one and the nine. Uh, the completion this year was against hey, get, the Bears. Get, 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 get. Ready! Wait, From the 14, here's Cook to the right. Dalvin Cook, four to the 10 yard line. Kyle Duggar, one of the multiple safeties in on the tackle. I love what Kevin O'Connell has done here. A little sluggish performance. How are we going to be? He comes out no huddle, up tempo. Uh, trick play right off the bat just get the juices going and, and this, this has been a great drive and I love the distribution too. cooks gotten a couple times Jefferson a couple times Thielen's got a touch they're really in good rhythm so far Minnesota offense 23 points a game 13th in the league here we go here we go KJ Osborne was moved to that other side as Cook goes inside and going about the seven yard line with Devin McCourty, one of the great veterans in the league at 35 years old, the oldest defensive back in the NFL, still doing it and still doing it at a high level. He really is. You see a lot of substitutions with the Patriots, but McCourty is a guy who stays on the field all the time and directs traffic. A little more up tempo here again, Mike. Yeah, they stay on the field, third and two. Five in the pattern, and Cousins throws. It's caught for the touchdown by Jefferson. Team gritty on Thanksgiving. Why not? What an opening drive by Minnesota. This one's all about the protection first. It's clean. Kirk Cousins has a chance to scan. Here comes Jefferson on the drag route underneath the coverage. They stack him up. Let Justin come in behind it. Kirk Cousins right on the money when you throw it on the face mask. To a guy like that, he's going to finish it for you. What a drive. 
Greg Joseph tries to end it with seven, and he does with the extra point. 11 games, seven opening drive touchdowns for the Vikings, and this duo remains on fire. Cousins, Jefferson, everybody in the Twin Cities gritty. 7 0 Vikings. <laughs> And by Toyota, let's go places. And this was the place to be this morning in St. Paul. This is the 57th annual Thanksgiving football game organized by Scott Hamilton and his family and friends. They've been doing it since 1966 when he was 16 years old. Multiple generations represented there and in the crowd tonight. That's what we just love about sports. It bridges so many gaps and divides. And on a day like this, it brings all of us together. Hope your turkey bowl was good. Hope no one has sore hamstrings at home after getting out there this morning. Touchback. We'll start at the 25. And here is the New England offense. Mac Jones, Alabama. Ramondre Stevenson, Oklahoma. Jacoby Myers, NC State. Devontae Parker, Louisville. Hunter Henry, Arkansas. John New Smith, FIU. Trey Brown, Georgia Military College. Cole Strange, Chattanooga. James Ferentz, Iowa. Mike Owen, Michigan. Yadney Kajus, West Virginia. Missing two stars up front, the center, David Andrews. The tackle, Isaiah Wynn. They gave up six sacks last week. They've got a loud crowd to deal with. And Jones fumbles the snap, but gets it back and throws across the field. And that's brought in for a gain of 26 yards by Jacoby Myers, who's shaken up. Boys. Fumbled at the snap, a bit discombobulated but able to hit Myers in stride. The athletic training staff walks him off. The Patriots go no huddle. And he did hold on with that left hand. Walked right to the bench to be examined. Give to Damian Harris. He goes inside, and that's a good gain for the Patriots here of seven on first down, an offense that did not score last week against the Jets. Any touchdowns, their only TD came on special teams. And for the quarterback, Mac Jones, it's year two, the first round pick out of Alabama. Numbers not as good as the rookie season. Missed three starts with the ankle injury. This is fifth since returning. After the gain of seven, back to Harris again. And he'll be spun forward for the first down by Zadarius Smith, the best pass rusher up front for the Vikings. That's something, Mike, I'm going to be looking at. Minnesota wants to stop the run with their front seven. They want to keep the safeties back and confuse the quarterback. Can the Patriots run the ball at him and make him come out of that deep shell? From the 39, five of the pattern for Jones. So Hunter Henry, the tight end. We'll get about five to the 24 yard line against this Minnesota defense. Neil Hunter, LSU. Jonathan Buller, Florida. Harrison Phillips, Stanford. James Lynch, Baylor. Zadarius Smith, Kentucky. Jordan Hicks, Texas. Eric Kendricks, UCLA. Duke Shelley, Kansas State. Harrison Smith, Notre Dame. Cam Bynum, Cal. Patrick Peterson, LSU. Shelley's their fifth option at corner to start, so they're hurting over there. They've given up 400 yards or more in five of their 10 games this year. Second and six, the backfield's empty. And Jones throwing down the middle. It's caught and brought in by Nelson Aguilar for the touchdown. Well, a couple of teams that were sleepy on offense last week on a short week have made resounding opening statements. The Pats walk it down the field and score. Nelson Aguilar didn't start tonight. But he comes in in this three wide receiver set. The safeties divide. He's got the middle seam. Great throw. And Mac Jones looks those safeties off. Watch the eyes here, Jason. Look outside first, down the middle. Great throw. Love when you have that speed of the slot in Aguilar. Mac Jones was right on the money. Veteran Nick Folk for the extra point. And he will knock that through. I know it's only three for three, but that's as good as Mac has looked all year. Man, that looks like last year, Mac Jones. He had some time. That's right. Good point. <laughs> Aguilar's score evens the game at seven. After the game here on NBC. Forward to that, and Patriots fans something to look forward to tonight. An early touchdown 
first TD in the first quarter this season. Wow. So now everybody's off the schneid. All 32 <laughs> teams on a board in the first frame. One move back. Good job, guys. Out of the studio. He gave us offense out of the yes. game. I like that? it. It's good stuff. This is a good returner here in one route. From the two. And the Pats special teams all over it. Tackle at the 21 by Jelani Tavai, who is also a part of the New England defense. DZY Jr., Arkansas. Devon Gottschalk, LSU. Lawrence Guy, Arizona State. Matthew Judon, Grand Valley State University. Juwan Bentley, DeMatha Catholic. Jelani Zavaya, the University of Hawaii. Jonathan Jones, Auburn. Kyle Duggar, Lenore Ryan. Devin McCourty, Rutgers. Jabril Peppers, Michigan. Jalen Mills, LSU. Well, we just saw the Cowboys defense. They're the only ones who give up fewer points per game than the Patriots. There is Jacoby Myers, who caught the pass on that first drive. Walking off the field for further examination. Cousins from the 21. Throws complete to Jefferson. He's staying busy tonight. It's a gain of five. They'll mark him at the 26-yard line. He comes in second in the league in yards. Only Tyreek Hill has more. Looks like uh, the Vikings heard Jason Garrett say, get the ball to 4 and 18 tonight. <laughs> Doing a good job of that in their opening script. Those Jimmys and Joes make a difference, Coach. <laughs> yes, they do. Second and four, it is Cook. Going away from the first tackle, it'll go near the 30-yard line. I'm, I'm curious, guys, because we always talk about what you were just mentioning, Bill Belichick's game plan. We're going to make you play left-handed. We're going to take away the best option Kevin O'Connell has on the other side. So when, as coaches, do you know what he's trying to take away for the night. Well, it's a challenge for him. We had a great discussion with Coach Dungey and Coach Belichick last night about Marvin Harrison back in the day, always lining up on one side, maybe easier to double him. This guy is all over the formation, so it's challenging to put a couple guys on him, and he's going to win a one-on-one -on, -one on every snap. Third and one. Pats bring four. Cousins to the air. It's nearly picked off. He was going for Jefferson in their best cover corner. Jonathan Jones was there. It's three and out for Minnesota. I, I got to take that one back. He was one on one <laughs> there. And Jonathan Jones, fantastic job driving on the ball. I think Kirk was a little late and a little behind with the football. He's got to put that thing out of the boundary. Jones has excellent closing speed. The Vikings got lucky. Ryan Wright is the rookie punter. Marcus Jones is back deep to receive. Last time he touched a punt, he ended the game essentially against the Jets. The only touchdown last Sunday at Foxborough. Beautiful kick here by the rookie. Fair caught all the way back at the 13-yard line. 57 on the boot for the rookie Wright. Woof. Exhale, man. That could have gone the other way. Up to you by Geico. Been a nice mild few days here in the Twin Cities. Temperatures above freezing, no snow. <laughs> nice to get that late November. Yes. That is mild for this time of year. Patriots taking over from their own 14. Second drive of the game. Ramondre Stevenson is the back. And boy, a lot of folks like him. Gaining about five there. Melissa Stark. Oh, Mike, we saw Jacoby Myers, the team's leading receiver, get injured, making the Patriots' first catch of the game, went into the medical tent. The unaffiliated neurotrauma consultant went in with him. We then saw him leave the field. He is currently in the x-ray room. We'll get you an update from the team as soon as we have it. Wide receiver Devontae Parker also was in the tent for about the last five minutes. They were looking at his lower right leg, but he just came out and put his helmet on. Okay, Melissa, thank you. Stevenson out of the backfield here, gets to the edge. And we'll have third and a couple. Vikings wanted a holding penalty there. Parker did come in with a knee injury in the game, was questionable. So we'll watch the depth on the Patriots wide receiving court. Third down coming up. Really like Mac Jones's rhythm so far in this game. He's looked hesitant the last few weeks. He's getting the ball out of his hand quickly for some positive plays for New England. So Ed Donatel on the sideline. He's the Vikings defensive coordinator. To Stevenson, who's coming closer to Mac Jones, but could not squeeze that. And both teams, after touchdowns on drive one, three and outs on drive two. 
They put Ramondre all the way outside, coach, and they put a bunch in front of him, and they love his versatility. Ball's not as easy as it could be. A little bit high. Ramondre certainly thinks that he should make that play, and though. They had something there if he caught it. He sure did. Michael Pilardi, it's week two of him kicking guys. Jake Bailey's on the injury reserve with a back. Jalen Rager's back to receive. Low kick. Not a great one either. It'll only be 36 yards and hopped on by the Patriots at the 43. Best field position of the opening quarter for the Vikings when you come back. Second visit to this stadium. Pats fans don't want me to remind you it was Super Bowl 52. The Eagles winning with the Philly special. Last visit in here. Vikings start at the 43. Hey, bump 50, bump 50. Double shot. I'd love to hear all the communication. Here is Cook to the left. Just diving forward to the 49-yard line. There is a penalty flag down back in the secondary. It looks like this is going to be on the Patriots. Usually, Mike, when you get that flag, it's holding on the defensive holding. line. Defense number 92. It's a five-yard penalty from the end of the run. First down. Devon Godshaw. Mike, you mentioned all the communication. You know, Minnesota, as much as any team in this league, before the snap in their running game, they'll change the play. You've seen that a lot already in this ball game, and it's a little bit of a challenge with New England because they play some unconventional personnel groupings. So the looks aren't going to be quite as clean. Hey, three down. Hey, hey. It's a hut. Cena. Ready? What's that? It's fullback CJ Ham on the move and Cousins. Running away from trouble and throwing sideline for Thielen, who made himself available for the catch at the 30, 44 yard line, I should say. Just a pickup of two. Matthew Judon leading the league in sacks, and he gets him a, a number of different ways. He lines up left side, right side. Here he beats the back. And that's the thing I love about him relentless. He stays after it. A chance to visit with Matthew. So many of his sacks, his 13 this year, have been chasing guys yes. down. Yeah. His sack reel shows a lot of hustle. Cook, he'll play there. Great job by Raquan McMillan, the sixth year man out of Ohio State. The former Buckeye came flying in for a loss of a pair of we'll third and ten coming up. Watch McMillan here. He's right in the middle of the screen, and what he does is just simply shoot the gap. This is a wide zone run. There's an empty gap in there. And Raekwon just hits it. Good yeah. instincts, good feel, good tackle for loss. And now Minnesota finds themselves in third long. Watch out for Judon here. Judon's going to be at the top of your screen. It's easy to find with those red sleeves. Cousins has time. And he throws the interception. Jonathan Jones with a lot of space. Jones across midfield inside the 30 Jones getting a block in front peppers out of bounds inside the 20 and the Patriots come up with their 18th turnover of the season and Jonathan Jones has his third INT when Kirk Cousins has a clean pocket he's as good as anybody throwing the ball in the league under pressure sometimes he gets a little careless here's an example there's some heat right in his face he gets a little careless. New England does a fantastic job pressuring the quarterback and then keeping their eyes on the quarterback on the back end. They're going to make you pay for a throw like that. And that was actually a double team on Jefferson. Jonathan Jones came off him and got the interception. Good call on the pressure there as well, Jason. Equale was at the feet of Cousins. He couldn't make that sharp pass, the turnover. And now the opportunity for Damian Harris to run it to the 14 yard line and a gain of three and this will be a good test for New England right here they've moved the ball here the last few weeks when they get in this part of the field Mac Jones told us last night we just got to prevent ourselves from going backwards with minus plays sacks penalties so they're just going to try to inch it forward then hopefully cash in on the end of this drive and you saw the numbers only Denver's worse in the red zone this year. Fourteen, trick it up a little bit. Kendrick Bourne can't get away. Harrison Phillips had the penetration, and the former Buffalo Bill 
made sure there was nothing tricky that was going to succeed for the Pats. Harrison Phillips just gets a great read on this here. You're going to see the line go right and pull, but he penetrates. And really, he and Zadarius Smith end up stopping this play with penetration. And Jason, that's what you said, the negative plays, and they yep. get down there. This is what's killed the Patriots. Now you find yourself in third and long. He's got to be careful with the ball here. And Jones pass complete. And as Aguilar holds on, shy of the 15-yard line, and they'll set up a field goal of about 33 yards. And that is a win for the Minnesota defense. Sudden change, you stop them, hold them to a field goal. That's what you want to do when you go out there on defense after a turnover. Tackles for loss, sacks, penalties have killed the Patriots in this part of the field. Showed up one more time. So we'll see if the turnover turns into a field goal. Folk is on from 34. 10 7 New England. They turn the turnover into three. Late first quarter. Hope you're enjoying Thanksgiving. And guess what? On The Voice, live Mondays and Tuesdays at 8 7 Central on NBC. And of course, streaming on Peacock. We're talking about the Twin Cities over in St. Paul, the state capital here of Minnesota. First seven by Minnesota, the next 10 by the Patriots. Folk kicks and one Wu returns from the four. Trying to pick which direction he was going. He has been well covered. Jabril Peppers and Brennan Schooler stop him there. That brings Justin Jefferson onto the field for Minnesota. Year three. Came out of LSU. You know, he only had one SEC offer. He goes the first <laughs> receiver. Four others went ahead of him. He keeps an eye on what they do, and we're all keeping an eye on what he does. Second most receiving yards through three seasons in NFL history. Most yards in the league in the last two-plus seasons. And in his sights, Randy Moss to be the player to lead the NFL in receiving yards over that three-year stretch. He has burst on the scene, a couple of Pro Bowls, and he's a Hall of Famer already. Alexander Madison to give. No game there. When he made the great catch in Buffalo, the glove and the sleeves went up to the Hall of Fame again, <laughs> and they will talk forever about the play made by Jefferson against Buffalo. How good is that? We had such a nice visit with him, and he, he's got this great way about him. His smile, his spirit is incredible, but he knows the four guys who got drafted ahead of him, Yes. and he follows and keeps an eye on it, and he's got an edge to him. He's got a killer instinct that shows up on this football field every week. Plus one by Madison. Patriots bring a late fourth to rush. The pass is caught by Phelan. Limited gain there. And here's Melissa. Mike Justin Jefferson told us he has learned so much from veteran wide receiver Adam Thielen. He said Thielen took him under his wing immediately. So I asked Thielen about it. He said, I'm an open book. When the young guys come in, I'm so passionate about what I do that Jefferson is so calm and so gifted. He doesn't need me. He said, I guess if I do anything, I keep his confidence up. And I assure him that he's doing a great job. Yeah, they have been so essential to each other. And you see Thielen limping off after that hit on second down. So Jalen Rager is coming as the receiver on third and seven. And Cousins throwing for the tight end, brought in by T.J. Hawkinson at the 33-yard line. It's a first down. Very rare trade in the division in season. Hawkinson comes from Detroit. Immediate impact here in Minneapolis. After one, Pats 10, Vikings 7. Sunday Night Football on Thanksgiving night will continue after these messages. It's got three points off that interception. What happened on that play? Yeah, we forced ourselves, had a negative run on second down, forced us into kind of a third and longer. I thought the protection held up well. Uh, you know, we just got to make a good decision when the longer yardage third downs come up. We just have to manage those in a way uh, where we finish those possessions, at least with a conversion or a punt if we have to. But Kirk's going to just made a great third down conversion right there. He'll get him in a rhythm like on that first drive. We'll be fine. What do you want to see on the rest of this drive right here? Uh, just consistency of being able to get runs off, apply pressure, use our tempo, uh, and just try to keep them off balance. Appreciate Thanks it. That. Thanks. All right, Melissa, thank you. Here's how I know 37-year-old Kevin O'Connell's a good head coach. i got two good head coaches up here with me. That's exactly what you guys said yeah. in the break. The throw by Cousins shows you, <laughs> right? Uh, Kevin's terrific. Only Sean McVay, the younger 
And of course, he was with McVay with the Rams the last two years. Second quarter begins. It's Alexander Madison on a run to the left to the 37 yard line. All right, Hall of Fame coach Dungy, what was that was so good? Well, it just was the timing here. Out breaking route. He lets it go before Hawkinson makes the break, puts it right on the hands. That was a confidence throw. And Jason said, hey, after an interception to come back with one like that, that shows you something. Yeah, the near interception to Jones. Then he throws the pick. And you said a coach. He let the ball go early. It was halfway there before Hawkinson turned. It's a big time conversion. Hey, 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 hey. Ready? What's your heart? Double sack. Second and six. Pressure on. Cousins throws. It's complete. Jefferson on the run to the 42 yard line. Gain of 21. First down, Minnesota. There's that guy again, but it starts up front. It's play action. The protection is clean. Kirk comes out of it and rips it in there. There's the hole. Jefferson's there. Two really confident throws by Kirk Cousins. And when you're throwing to Hawkinson and that guy, Justin Jefferson, easy to see why he's cutting it loose. Five man rush, so no double coverage. One on one, and uh, Justin Jefferson told us, I wouldn't do that against me. Yeah, throw it to that guy one more time. Ready? What's that? KJ Osborne's the move man. It's first down play action, and it'll come back down to Hawkinson. What a big block on the last play. Has a gain here of seven to the 35 yard line. Kirk Cousins told us he couldn't believe that Hawkinson got here so fast and how quickly he got up to speed after his time in Detroit. Yeah, and that was really a good decision by Kirk Cousins there. They had play action shot play. It wasn't there. Just take your five yard gain. Keep the chains moving. Don't try to force anything. We're talking about Minnesota nice. How about Minnesota smart? This place is library quiet. <laughs> When the Vikings are on offense, Alexander Madison first down to the 27 yard line for the fourth year back out of Boise State. Kirk Cousins engineering a nice drive here. You know, Kirk Cousins is already third in wins by starting quarterbacks. I, I cannot believe yeah. that, Mike. You know, I'm a Vikings fan. I would have got number one, number two, would not have got number three. Now you immediately think Culpepper? No. Yes. Cousins. Bunch of wins here in his first four seasons plus and building on it here to the tight end Johnny Munt to the 20 yard line. Matthew Judon was coming but Cousins got rid of it. Yeah, this is Matthew Judon on that left side and he plays the bootleg here. They expect him to chase the run. He goes upfield and Cousins makes a great throw. His flat receiver was not open. He comes back to Munt inside. That was great reaction. We call that a chief route coach. If you don't get the guy in the flat, find that guy right there. He and Munt on the same page. Wait, your heart. Protect it. Hey, get, get. Sit this. Hey, hey, hey. There's Kirk changing the run play again. On second and three, he'll send Dalvin Cook left. He's got a lot of white shirted Patriots there. It'll be minus one on the run. Jalen Mills on the corner with a stop. Kirk told us this was something he had to adjust to. He was used to getting up, call a play, run it, and now he's making a lot more decisions in the running game at the line of scrimmage, and that was new for him. Yeah, so much of what they did here the last few years comes from Gary Kubiak, who was the offensive coordinator here, and he liked to use the fast tempo and get up and snap it. Here's some fast tempo by Minnesota here on this third and short. And third and three, Cousins bouncing, lofting it. It's Cook on the run. First down, Dalvin Cook. A beautiful open field tackle by Miles Bryant, but it's first down for the Vikings just inside the 15 yard line. Keep getting the ball to this guy, Dalvin Cook. They go fast. Dalvin just sneaks across the formation. He lines up in the slot. The versatility shows up. He's on a backer. They try to reroute him. Just give him the ball. And this is a big time tackle on the back end by Miles Bryan. This could have gone all the way. He can do so much. That, that's incredible lining up as a wide receiver. Ready? Where's your hook? Double shot. 11th play of the drive. Play action Cousins. End zone was covered down to Cook and it fires through his hands. An incomplete. Melissa set the table at the top of the game of Kevin O'Connell, the coach of the Vikings, who's going up against Bill Belichick, who drafted him. 
it's fun to watch third downs. You guys talked about how the Patriots are so good with all their personnel groups. So all these third downs, it's quick. It's quick. We're not letting Belichick be the master chess mover. Yeah, he sat in those team meetings. <laughs> He's heard all the conversations for a long time, and he kept his notebooks. It's a good idea. None of that tonight. <laughs> Feeling back in the game the last four or five plays. Cook seeking space. That's a nice run inside the 10 to the nine yard line. That is a great run, Mike, because there was so much penetration right there at the point of attack. And he's going to see white color show up right in his face. This is an outside run. That's a great cutback. Three straight thousand yard seasons. Yeah. All right. So he avoided the long yardage. Could have been third and ten. Third and mm -hmm. five is manageable. Play 13 of the drive. Can the Pats hold them to three? Manned up on Jefferson. Cousins comes to the second receiver and in traffic it is caught by Jefferson. We have a flag down, but somehow. Through all those bodies, Jefferson caught it. But a flag back where they were trying to protect Cousins. Holding offense number 67. Ten yard penalty, third down. That's the rookie right guard, Ed Ingram. Ingram is the right guard here and he draws the short straw having to block Judon inside and Judon is so good on those inside moves instant pressure Ingram had no chance this looked like single coverage but it wasn't Uche drops out gets the jam <laughs> disrupts the route and still it's caught yeah. Kirk's got to be smart here third and long got to preserve the field goal opportunity Crossing underneath, it's Thielen. Stops on a dime, but the Patriots are there and waiting for him to bring him down at the 12. Jalen Mills, one of the two defensive backs to set up this field goal. And that's a good call and good execution. You're not going to make third and 15 against this Patriots defense. Take what you can get, get it in field goal range, take your points. Greg Joseph's second season with the Vikings. He's been very good under 50 yards. He hasn't missed. Problem is over 50. He's missed five of six. This one's from 30. And it ties the game at 10. Long, long drive. It's been a long day. Turning to a long evening. I would identify our cameraman, but I want to protect <laughs> who he is. <laughs> Big personality. Boom, we cross him. The left goes to the right, the right goes to the left. Hall of Fame coach, uh, really a Hall of Fame announcer, and has done so much to promote the love of football. A special, special man. John Madden's grin is from ear to ear. And one of the great ambassadors in the history of the game. Madden carried off the Rose Bowl, Super Bowl XI, when they beat the Vikings. Boy, would you love to just be there for the Belichick Madden conversations over the years? Talk about two people yes. who don't just embrace but have such depth and knowledge of the history of the NFL and the meaning of what happens in the league. Marcus Jones here on the kickoff return. He's got a lane. Jones cutting it to the outside. Good return by Jones out to midfield. We have an injured Viking back at the 20 yard line as well as a penalty flag that is down. Officials timeout. One of the key special teams players, Chris Boyd, who's also a backup corner, where they are very thin here tonight. And they come out to look at Boyd. I'm going to take that back. It was not a penalty flag, it was a yellow mouthpiece that was on the field over by Boyd. So this return will stay up. And Boyd is up as well, which is a good sign. I'm glad to see that. So the return will take it out to midfield. For Marcus Jones, it brings it back 46 yards. Jones has been a fabulous addition to this Patriots he really team. Has. 
Giving them life in the return game. He's second in the league in kickoff returns. And gives Mac Jones the ball just shy of midfield. Ramondre Stevenson. Nice run to the 36-yard line. We're talking about Belichick, guys. How effusive was he in praising the running back, Stevenson? It was incredible. I mean, he went on and on and on, and Coach doesn't speak a whole lot in those production meetings, but he probably talked about Ramondre for 15 minutes, and he compared his growth and his development in a short period of time to both Tom Brady and to Lawrence Taylor. I know. We, we all kind of glanced at each other, and it was not the ability of the player down the line, the growth, though. So impressive. Stevenson runs to the left. You know, people do games all the time. They talk about the production meetings of Bill <laughs> Belichick, and I've been in a bunch of them over the years. I'm going to tell you, last night was great listening to the three of you talk football and football history of Belichick. He was he was enjoying it as much as you guys were. Uh, yeah. He was great and, and gave us some jewels, and he talked about Stevenson when he said he's one of our most dependable players. That said something to me, because that's what he values. Halfway through the second, all tied at 10. Out quick, Kendrick Bourne trying to get some blocking from Aguilar on the edge. He'll get to the 30-yard line. It'll be a gain of five with a third and three coming up for New England. Again, you can kind of see their philosophy. Getting rid of the ball quick, Jason, not stressing their pass protection. No doubt, and their pass protection has been stressed in the last few weeks, resulting in a lot of sacks. They're getting it out quickly with the screens. Knock look sharp. And there's E. Matt Patricia who's calling the plays into Mac Jones, the de facto offensive coordinator. Well, as Belichick says, I'm not big on titles. <laughs> Third and three. Vikings bring four. Stevenson in the open field. Did he get there? His knee comes down short of it. It's going to be marked a yard short. Jeff Bergman, the veteran line judge, right on the spot as that knee came down. It'll be fourth down. And that is a great play by Harrison Smith just getting a finger on him and coming up with that short fourth and one. And the field goal unit is on for the Patriots. You see shin and knee clearly down. The mark was perfect. And it will be Falk from 46 yards. I think uh, he's glad to be indoors after the wind <laughs> last week in Foxborough. Nails it from 46. The kickoff return sets up three for the Pats. Best taking on England on Telemundo, the Spanish language broadcast, 1.30 Eastern tomorrow. So many of you watch the Premier League on NBC and USA and Peacock. Well, almost the entire England team is made up of Premier League players. And the man wearing the gloves for Team USA, the keeper, Matt Turner, he was a pretty good player for the New England Revolution. The uh, Patriots honoring his success, the top goalkeeper in MLS the last couple of years. As he has played there in Foxborough, and he'll have a big one on his hands tomorrow. Touch back here, Tony. Well, let's take a look at the Walmart Plus 4K Skycam. And we're going to check out Matthew Judon. When you're the number one sack man in the league, you're going to get plenty of attention. Chips from the tight ends, double teams. So what do you do? You try to come inside. He told us he doesn't like to come inside, but here is a rush over the guard. Crucial holding penalty. He's going to adjust his rushes to deal with those chips that he's getting. Love how he's moving around. I love how he's going inside. He's a powerful man. You said it earlier, Coach. This guy's relentless. It's exhausting. Hit from the 25. Whoa! What a hit by Jelani Tavai. He got Dalvin Cook and took him down. Loss of two on the play. <laughs> yeah, you go through all those mechanics of can can, you change it three or four times, you revert, you go back to the other one, you hand it off. <laughs> Tavani's in your lap. <laughs> Really what, good job by what's the way. Happening on downhill. These, yeah, the double teams are coming late. They're starting the double team. He's shooting his gun, and they've got to come off quicker. Second and 12. Patriots bring pressure again. Cousins retreating towards Hawkinson. And McCourty was there waiting for it. It'll bring up third and long. 
as this New England defense starts to heat up here. They call that running through on those on those running plays, and if they see a gap, they can hit it. And you know, one of the things that Coach Belichick values in his defensive players is a high football IQ, and the guys who can see that and hit it and know that if they do it, they better be right. We've seen that a couple times tonight. It's a big part of what they do on defense. Son Steve, the linebackers coach. Other son Brian coaches the safeties. Steve and Gerard Mayo, so much a part of it. That's Judon unabated to the quarterback. He shakes Cousins hand on the way. And it'll shorten up the third Outside, down. Defense number nine, unabated to the quarterback. It's a five-yard penalty, still third down. And that that's big because you heard Kevin O'Connell say, we've got to just be smart when we get in these third and longs. Now we're back into manageable. Now he'll dial up something a little more aggressively, I think. And you talk about football IQ, obviously not not a smart play by Judon, but when you have 13 sacks as a coach, <laughs> you're, you're some, sometimes do that you're every with, now and you then. live with a couple of those. <laughs> so you're saying you were okay with that every once in a while. Demarcus Ware, baby. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, Demarcus. <laughs> Third and seven. Cousins protected, firing deep. Jefferson. He wow. brought it down. <laughs> of course he did. What else does he do every time? Mike, we talked about this at the break. In, in and out double. They did that the last third down. So what do you do? You run through it, Jason. Absolutely. They call this an east-west double. Yeah. They're covering the east. They're covering the west. They're not covering the north. We, <laughs> we thought they would come to this once they saw how they were doubling him on third down and that's just ridiculous look, look at where he pins it it's kind of moving and, and between the bicep there he just kind of keeps it in place this guy is ridiculous 37 on that one for Jefferson the 35 Dalvin Cook for five yards so we asked him about the catch you know what the catch was right against Buffalo and I said are you tired of talking about it I never get tired of talking about that. As he said, there are only so many catches you can label as one of the best. And he said well, it. He wasn't bragging about himself. He was just matter of fact about it. Here they are from the 30. Cousins rolls it, throws it. Jefferson again. 16 on that one. First time. Just throw to him all day. It's too much fun. But going back to that catch, he talked about the LSU guys. And he said, yes, Odell and Jarvis, when they did the one-handed thing, Jamar Chase and I started practicing those one hand. Now they all think it's normal. And they're making it normal. <laughs> if you come from LSU, I yeah. guess. Yeah. Uh, the, the thing that I love is how Kirk Cousins is cutting the ball loose here. He sets up. He knows that he's going to enter that hole on the other side of the defender, and he just rips it with people right in his face. 18 plucks it out of the sky. Another big game for the Vikes. For well, the 14, Cousins sweeping it out to Hawkinson. T.J. Hawkinson, first and goal, Minnesota, as they mark it just inside the five. Maybe a hair, hair short of that first down. Watch Hawkinson here. He's off the ball on the right-hand side, and he works his way back across the formation and runs a little sneak route. This play-action game and moving the quarterback has been excellent. Good job by Kirk getting the ball up and over Judon's outstretched hands good things happen when you throw it to Hawkinson too. love the variety that we're seeing in this Minnesota offense so far well they did give him the first down at the four I thought the initial spot was right to have my hair short yeah. first and goal Vikings from the four and it's Dalvin Cook inside Cook keeps pushing inside the one you can see McCourty try to get his hands on the ball there as we sneak up on the two minute warning here Like to see Minnesota manage this situation right here. They can take this thing all the way down to the two minute warning. And why not do that? So take a peek at the end of this run here. Look at the drive by Dalvin. Yeah, he's laying on body, so no body part is down. And McCourty does a nice job of preventing him from reaching the ball he sure to does. break the plane. The veteran knows what he's doing. So he'll bleed it down to the two minute warning. What has been an entertaining first half here at U.S. Bank. And the Jets combined for 224 <laughs> yards of offense in two games. The last two against the Patriots. And the Vikings first half offense has exceeded that total. 
We're now trying to punch it in to take the lead out of the two minute warning. Ole Udo, the extra offensive lineman, is eligible on second and goal. Cousins bobbles it and gets it to Cook, who pushes forward and he cannot get to the goal line. Godshaw in there on the tackle. And they'll bring up third and goal. Belichick strolling down there. Yeah, and this is, is the key right here. Getting that penetration stuff. And these are big men inside. So I'm looking play action pass or wide run here. Carl Davis stuffed the front there. Belichick finally took the time out as he walked down there, preserved some time with 129 remaining in this first half. And we go down to Melissa Stark. Mike, Dalvin Cook and his younger brother James, a Bills running back, played against each other a few weeks ago. Their mom, Von White, told me it was the hardest game ever <laughs> to watch. Well, it didn't get any easier today. James played earlier against the Lions, and there they are. Dalvin, of course, playing tonight. Mom told me it was a huge dilemma which game to go to. The boys offered to get her a plane, but given the holiday, she decided it was best to just stay home and watch both of her sons while relaxing at home with family. Ah, that, that is cool. And a nice family. Watch the first game, have dinner, costume change, get in our Vikings gear and watch this get one. Get purple out. And see if Dalvin can punch it in here. Third and goal. It's a fake. And Cousins flips it to Hawkinson. Touchdown, Minnesota. Hey, Minnesota puts big people out on the field and they go play action. Hawkinson lines up on the right and one more time he sneaks across the formation. Kirk buries the fake. Patience lays the ball. Love a it. Big don't, time conversion don't, don't for the fight. All those big bodies inside. So him break out the gritty for the first time. Joseph missed the extra point. We told wow. you that has been an issue. He has now missed five extra points. He missed four all of last year. So the margin remains three after Hawkinson's first touchdown as a Viking. Joseph cannot pay it off. 16-13 Minnesota. When Coach Madden is doing the game on Thanksgiving, it is a very, very big deal. You just wanted to perform at your very best because the world is watching and knowing that Madden will be calling the game, that just made it that much more sweet. A couple of the guys who had the memorable moments with Madden at the mic on Thanksgiving will join and John's son Mike will narrate our story on John Madden. Stay with us, special halftime. Tony, back to the touchdown. What happened? Yes, and I'm sure the Patriots worked on this. Kyle Duggar is down here, and he's got to keep everything on his inside shoulder, be as wide as the widest. He sees it just late, and he falls down. But that should be covered. He should have been able to handle that. That is his responsibility. Coach Belichick not real happy. He told him a million times, you got the flat guy. I don't care where he came from. His old pupil's pretty happy, though. Dude, Look at that we smile. Got him. We got him. <laughs> Three points last week. These guys coming in on short week 17 in the first half on this defense feel good about it. Patriots have two timeouts. They get the ball to start the second half too. Back Jones, Ramondre Stevenson. <laughs> Five that, yards, Harrison Smith, terrific that veteran. That is a great tackle by Harrison Smith. Stevenson is a big back, strong, and, and to get him and not let him get out of bounds, that's a big play. Jacoby Myers injured on the first play of the game back out there for New England. The 30. Jones. Good patience to get it to Hunter Henry with a lot of room. Hunter Henry stays in bounds, wow. goes to the 48 yard line. Timeout, New England. Hunter could have gotten to the sideline there. We're back in 30 seconds after this from AWS. AWS is helping the NFL transform player health and safety. AI analyzes millions of data points, powering unlimited simulations to continuously improve equipment and training, and help predict potential injuries faster than any human. Because when it comes to player safety, nothing matters more. 
Jason. I heard you as that play was <laughs> ending. Yeah, good decision by Mac. Nice completion of Hunter Henry. He's making a big run. You got to get out of bounds in that situation and preserve the timeout. And we're both coaching up here. I'm saying <laughs> break down by the defense. They're playing man. Who lost their man? I'm saying get out of bounds. <laughs> it's been all week like this with these guys. For the 48. Four-man route. Firing complete. Devontae Parker at the 31-yard line. The 33 yard line is where they'll mark it. No timeouts. And this pass protection has been outstanding by the Patriots during this drive. And that has not been the case of late. Four man rush here. Jones against sideline. Parker feet down. Yes. Inside the 20 rule the catch at the 19 yard line. Coach and you said it. he's been under duress a lot here the last few weeks and the pocket has been clean and you get a chance to see what Mac Jones is all about. He's really delivered some strikes. Just love his decisiveness throughout this first half and on this drive and a really really nice catch on the back end by Devontae Parker. All right one timeout 30 seconds Patriots ball at the 18. Jones in trouble here and escape go down and he'll take the last timeout with 24 seconds to go. And, and this is a mistake by Mac. Jason he's got to throw this ball away rather than go down. Yeah two situations here they had plenty of time and they had timeouts. Hunter Henry doesn't get out of bounds and now like you said Mac. Runs and then has to take the timeout yeah. and these are the kind of things that come back and haunt you a little bit. You know we talked about Mac Jones we had a great visit with him around Alabama with two and Jalen Hurts he redshirted waited his opportunity won the championship. It's only his 25th start. Feels like he's been around longer than that, and there are plays like that that you don't expect. No doubt. No one's more prepared to play for Coach Belichick than Mac Jones. <laughs> Good point. Having been with Coach Saban down there, so he's heard a lot of the same things over the last few years. <laughs> Second and ten. Here is Jones throwing in the middle without timeouts. It's a caught ball by Aguilar at the five. They're going to get down and kill it. Clock is down to 13, now 12 seconds. Good job by the Patriots to get on the ball, and they'll give themselves a snap if they want to throw end zone with eight seconds remaining. They do. You you can take one shot to the end zone here if you trust your quarterback. You guys, a absolutely, you can. And for Minnesota in this situation, don't play man-to-man -man coverage where it's tight, and you give him a quick throw. Play off coverage. Exactly. You sound like a defensive <laughs> coach. Get back on the goal line, protect the goal line, make him throw it in front of you. Unless you have Patrick Peterson, if you look at him up on top, <laughs> he's by himself with Devontae Parker. Now he's playing off. Reset the clock to nine. Second and goal from the Bump. five. Jones got rid of it. Bourne battling was Duke Shelley. Mac Jones can't Bump. believe there was no flag on Shelley, who got the start tonight because of the injuries. And the field goal unit will come off. And as soon as you saw this bump and run coverage, you know where the ball is going. Take your shot to Bourne. This is a good read good throw and good coverage but I would not take that chance. Why put yourself in that position yeah, play off especially with Shelley who's an awfully good cover guy but he's 5 8 big height advantage for New England there it's a missed opportunity. Folk to square the game. All even at 16 with three seconds till halftime. It's pretty good first half here. What has been a really good football day as well as we celebrate Thanksgiving and we go back down to Melissa. Mike since 2018 Adam Thielen and his wife Caitlin and the Thielen Foundation have provided more than two million dollars to schools and organizations around their home state especially to the youth who need resources most. They've upgraded facilities like stadium lights and weight rooms at local high schools. Thielen told me by providing resources like this to the kids, he hopes it will bring back a sense of pride to their city. Right, Adam Thielen, they're so proud of him, Melissa, too. Uh, not just the foundation that you talked about in the family, but the terrific backstory over the years from what is now Minnesota State, what was Mankato State. And here goes a guy from D2, an undrafted, to fourth on the all time Vikings touchdown reception list one away from the great Anthony Carter mm. and uh, third on the reception list Tony with Chris Carter and Randy Moss ahead wow. of him. Right? That's some good company to be in. 
for an undrafted free agent. That's right. right. That's right. Just being popped up here. Munt will take it. He'll take a knee, give himself up, and we'll have one second remaining. And Kirk Cousins is like, hey, come on, like, you're going to ruin my running average here. Just just run the last second. Yeah, he's going to give Kirk Cousins a chance to take a knee now. <laughs> give me the home clock. And help you. If, if you're Kevin O'Connell, you happy with the first half? Absolutely. Got off to a good start on the first drive. A hiccup there with the Cousins interception, but they came right back. New England can be challenging on defense. You never know what exactly they're doing. They use a lot of different personnel groups. They've been in good rhythm all game long. And if you're Bill Belichick, Tony? Very happy with my offense. I'm concerned about my defense and Justin Jefferson. How are we going to slow him down in the second half? It's just like being in the studio. I want to hear your comments, guys, before <laughs> halftime. Well done. Well done. The missed extra point, the only difference in that half. Otherwise, all even at 16. Great reflections on the legacy of John Madden on this Thanksgiving coming up on the Toyota Halftime. Halftime of Game 3 on Thanksgiving 2022. Minnesota 16, New England 16. Don't want to look away from the action? Just tell Siri, read my last text. Its first half highlights are brought to you by Chevrolet. It's the final course for you on Thanksgiving night 2022. Cousins throws. It's caught for the touchdown. Team gritty on Thanksgiving. What a drive. And Jones throwing down the middle. It's caught and brought in by Nelson Aguilar. Resounding opening statements. Cousins, and he throws the interception. Jonathan Jones. Cousins to Hawkinson. Chevrolet. EVs for everyone, everywhere. It's been 10 good quarters of football in the NFL this Thanksgiving. 16 alls we get to start, set to start the third here in Minnesota. Patriots defense allowed 231, most in the first half this season. The quarterbacks have both been good. The one interception by Cousins, and he was sacked once, only one of the game. Justin Jefferson, 94 receiving yards now, the most in the first three seasons for a player in NFL history. And the Hawkinson addition, four games, new team, 25 catches. That also a new NFL mark. So that a little bit of the sub story to 16 16 Mike Tirico with Tony Dungy and Jason Garrett here in the booth Chris Collinsworth back with me Sunday in Philadelphia Melissa Stark down on the sideline as the Patriots get set to receive the great Joseph kickoff. Marcus Jones will let it go. And Jason, what did you notice in the first half with Mac Jones? Hey, you know, two names we haven't talked about are Zadarius Smith and Daniil Hunter, two elite rushers for Minnesota. And the reason is Mac Jones is getting the ball out of his hand quickly. It's quick screens, it's quick throws, it's one, two, three, and the ball's out to the back time and time again. And then when he wants to throw the ball down the field, the pocket is that much more clean, and he's cast in on those opportunities. There is Hunter. Six sacks this year. Quiet in the first half. Damian Harris is the back as he was to start the game. And they keep those feet going, but only two yards as big Harrison Phillips was uh, filling up the middle. And I'll be interested, Mike, to see if New England doesn't make a concerted effort to run the ball a little bit more. I, I felt like, boy, you've got to challenge this seven-man front, see if you can get Minnesota out of that. They haven't run it enough to really tell in this first half. In the early part of these drives in the, se in the second half, it's interesting because they reflect the conversations you have at halftime. We'll see if, in fact, they want to make that emphasis. Second and eight, Ramondre Stevenson out of the backfield. Good, shifty move along with the power. One shy of the first down at the 34 yard line. So those halftime adjustments we talk about Jason they're not big huge adjustments. I think the best teams adjust all throughout the game. They adjust series to series to series. But you definitely go back in there and you're on your whiteboard and say hey this is what we're starting with. And they kind of reaffirm that the number one thing you're emphasizing. And that was another quick throw by Max sure Jones was. there. They like that formula. There's no doubt about that. Third and one, they're going to throw. And crossing is Parker. First down to Vontae Parker. To the 43-yard line. Came in questionable with a knee. Left the game early on. But a few catches since his return. 
And you mentioned we don't hear a lot about Daniil Hunter. Here is Damian Harris going to get a pickup on Zadarius. They've helped the tight ends and backs have helped these linemen out this this evening. The 44 on the inside give it will be Harris for nothing and doing this Tony and Jason without David Andrews their center and missed a couple of games with a concussion then injured his knee against the Jets. So it's been James Ferentz in there at center and this line has done a good job. Yeah and they've been a mess. They've been a mess the last few weeks. He's taken a lot of sacks and coach Belichick talks about game records. So Darius Smith and Daniil Hunter are game records and they have not wrecked the game. Credit to New England's approach. And Trent Brown the left tackle who was benched against the Jets is held up through the first half. Again quick games help with that. It's Aguilar bumped into Johnu Smith on his path to midfield. It'll be third and three and a half two and a half into this third quarter. Yep changing the rhythm throwing the ball quick when you do want to get it deeper blocking with the back the tight ends helping out the coaching staff has done a great job for New England today. Talking about veteran coaches Ed Donatel has been doing it for 32 years a third of that as a defensive coordinator his first year here with the Vikings. Bring it for Mac Jones pumps it throws it in the middle again it's complete tough hit to the side but the first down picked up by Jacoby Myers at the 37 yard line. You know, when you take that approach when you're trying to get the ball out of your hand quickly you get into these sticky third down situations. it's all about protection Jacoby Myers made the big play on the first play of the game he's back in there runs what we call a little dodge route in the middle of the field Mac locks in on him and delivers a strike but again it starts with that protection in pocket Myers is headed over to the sideline so to his Damian Harris on this drive so Stevenson's the fake Jones retreats just gets rid of it incomplete receiver in the area was Parker but for a second the Vikings sideline thought one of their two including Patrick Peterson could get to it. That was a great read by Peterson they actually wanted the deep cross and Peterson saw it and he was going to pick that off if Mac Jones had thrown it good job throwing it away. Patrick Peterson's played a couple games in this league hasn't he coach. He has. <laughs> and he loves this system too he told us last night he wished he could have played in this system his whole career. Peterson has 32 career picks Harrison Smith has 33. That's tops among the active guys in the league in the middle Henry he's open Hunter Henry broke a tackle on his way to the end zone for a touchdown. Good move in the open field for Henry opening drive score for the Patriots New England takes the lead again. Hey play action's been awfully good for New England and they get that open middle you see those two safeties. OK they're getting wide Hunter Henry right down the middle when you go play action those linebackers suck up you get Hunter Henry down the middle and Mac Jones has been on fire ball comes out of his hand quickly Hunter Henry's hard to tackle after the catch. Well, gets the extra point nobody does it like Belichick score before the half come back at the ball boom 10 points back to back drives and Hunter Henry's second touchdown of the season. That Jones looks good tonight doesn't he. 23 16 New England back on top. Hey. Hyundai it's your journey. And by small business Saturday it's this Saturday. Get out and support local shops in your neighborhood for the good of small businesses. Let's go shop small with American Express. And places like this the Ferndale Market family owned since 1939 now run by third generation turkey farmers with a new generation of shopper. The folks be out I'm sure downtown here in Minneapolis. U.S. Bank Stadium. Beautiful stadium one of my favorites in the league now open for its seventh year. Kane one will take it back to the four. Patriots doing a good job but one will get freed on the sideline. It's He's over. in bounds. He's going <laughs> one will 30 20. He will score.
97 yards. That's the third of his career. The, Min the Minnesota blocking unit really did a good job adjusting. They ran a couple of stunts. The Patriots did. They picked it up. And this was just, uh, boy, this was a spark, Jason. It sure was. Looked like New England lost contain. Kyle Duggar allowed him to get to the boundary. And when you get to the boundary, you got no help. Kenny has got too much speed for that. Joseph has missed one extra point. He adds that just like that. We are tied. Kenny Wanbu, he's got something going here. 99 against San Francisco last year, 98 against Baltimore. Now 97, the only player who had multiple kickoff returns last year. Tony he has the third in the league this year. And I'll tell you, Bill Belichick was my special teams coach in 1980 with the Giants. He, he's, you see him writing right there. Somebody is, is going to be in, the, in trouble for that. There is nothing that he takes more pride in than his special yes, teams unit. Yes. Always among he is the league's not best. Happy about that. He broke into this league as a special teams coach and. His teams have always been as good as it gets. A couple weeks ago against the Jets, they have the return. This is one he's not going to be happy with. And to your points, guys, 200 games. 2010, the last kickoff return for a touchdown against the Patriots. Here's C.J. Ham with yeah. a hand on there Duggar. There is a little bit of holding there. And that's why Duggar lost contain. You get that hand outside and you grab and restrict. But Ham's a veteran player too, Terry, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> Terry McCauley, our three-time Super Bowl referee, watching with us back at the studio. He's giving us the holding signal. <laughs> I've, I've been in meetings with Coach Belichick. You know what he's going to say? You can't get held. That's your fault still. So now the Joseph kickoff is a touchback to the 25-yard. Tony, you said something I'm going to get to in a second, but I want to talk about Bill Belichick and his coaching career of course so intertwined forever inexorably with Tom Brady great with Brady not as good with the others he's not alone Chuck Knoll's success with Bradshaw Jim Kelly's success when Marv Levy was the head coach but you <laughs> Peyton Manning of course great success but over 500 with the other guys well had some good quarterbacks Brad Johnson Sean King Trent Dilfer did a great job for me Fourth tie of the game. Mac Jones first down pass complete. Ramondre Stevenson on the edge for 10 yards. Did you say that Bill Belichick was your special teams coach? He was. I was a third year player there and he was going to use me on the punt block team. I told him I've never blocked a punt. I don't know what to do. He took me for 45 minutes after practice, showed me the technique, what to do. I blocked the punt the next day in Get practice. <laughs> Pretty good teacher and a pretty good yes. student, Mike, huh? That's amazing. <laughs> no kidding. Wow. All those years, I've never heard that story from you. First down picked up by Stevenson. Six yards picked up here by Aguilar. So, of course, it was Brady and Josh McDaniels was here for so long, and now he's in Las Vegas. Jason, it's different in a lot of ways. A lot of intelligence left the building and experience with Brady and McDaniels. It is different. I spoke with Coach Belichick this summer, and he said it was Tom Brady's offense. And there was so much baked into that. Now we have to make it Mac Jones's offense and the nuance and the detail. They kind of clean the slate. It's simpler. There's less volume and it's starting to come together tonight. Good run Stevenson first down midfield. Ramondre Stevenson as this game wears on a short week he'll become a bigger factor. I know I'm going to sound like a broken record Mike but they have to run this guy. He's strong. He's powerful. They've got two safeties deep. Give him the ball and let him operate. First and ten, back to Stevenson again. He gains a couple of yards. You know, Jason, I said a lot of intelligence left the offensive room. It's not that Matt Patricia is not intelligent. I mean, he's super intelligent. Aeronautical engineer between his stints at RPI and Amherst. He spent a couple of years as an application engineer at a firm in East Syracuse. It, he is really, really smart. But you've built up 20 years of the same offense. All the little stuff that is no longer there. Yeah, Matt's as smart as they come, but he's been on the defensive side throughout his whole career. And there's a perspective that he can offer that can help. 
but there's no doubt this has been a work in progress. Mac Jones has embraced Matt Patricia. He feels like he's really helped him grow as a quarterback. On second and seven here. Here's a shot down field for Devontae Parker. He brought it in at the seven yard line. First down. And I've been waiting for them to take a shot at Duke Shelley. Minnesota has disguised coverages, used too deep, but here's straight man coverage. Go route by Devontae Parker. He just runs by him and a beautiful ball by Mac Jones. It all started with the release. He got off the line of scrimmage clean, and when you do that, Mac's going to give him a chance. And the stature of Parker versus Shelley is an advantage. Throw it out there, and Devontae did the rest. And this protection has been great. It's been awesome tonight. Late play clock. A little disorganized, getting the snap off, and Jones will just do the smart thing here and get rid of it. And, and Mike, th th that's not a, a unique thing that happened right there. After a big play down the field, you have to be fast. That 40-second clock starts, and sometimes you, you celebrate. You spend a little too much time on what just happened, and you get up there, and you're running out, and Mac Jones hurried up, but they wasted it down, that, down there in the low red zone. You and I were talking about that on Tuesday, we right? Sure As a play caller, I wanted to know <laughs> what that panic was like. <laughs> Not enough urgency for the Patriots in that situation. Stevenson bouncing to the outside. That hole was closed, and Cameron Bynum was there to stop it. And here comes third down halfway through the third quarter. And this is a big play here. What are you going to come up with, Jason? What do you dial up third and goal from the six here? I think for these guys. I think you got to be careful playing man to man coverage. I think you play zone. You try to turn your outside rushers to Darius and Daniil loose and get to Mac Jones. Haven't seen much of Tyquan Thornton. He's in the game here. Receiver, third and goal. Mac Jones throw an end zone and it's caught for the touchdown. Henry, he's got another one. Hunter Henry with Chandon Sullivan, the DB there. Brings it in. We'll make sure he had it secure as he hit the ground. The Patriots retake the lead. Yes, Shannon Sullivan here. Henry's just going to come up and break out. Got to keep your outside leverage. You've got help inside. That's a oh. good route and I think a good catch. Mike. What a job he does with his hand. Watch it comes down with force. Look at that hand. Like that. It stays under the ball. That's a great job by Henry. Wow. Oh, is it moving? Well, let me bring in Terry McCauley, who's watching with us there. Terry? Mike, he's going to ground. He's got to maintain control when the ball hits the ground. It looks to me like he clearly loses control after the ball hits the ground. So even though that hand is under as he's broken but, the plane? But the ball hits the ground, and it moves. Exactly. He's got to complete the process of the catch. And here we see it. Absolutely an incomplete pass, guys. Wow. He had the hand underneath. Yeah. Right there. But that didn't move it, but then on the rollover, yeah. it moves. Will it be overturned? The verdict in a minute. Continue to watch in the break that this will be overturned and ruled incomplete. Terry, give you another minute here to chime in. Sure, you can see the ball hit the ground right there, rolls right on the goal line, and then that's a clear loss of control. This is an incomplete pass. It's Alex Kemp still looking. The conversation goes on back in New York, and it would be fourth and goal from the six. It was an incomplete, if it's an incomplete pass. Here he is with the catch over the plane already. But then it's that quote surviving and, the ground and what Henry didn't realize he already had the touchdown the ball was over the plane just secure it bring it into your body. He reached out tried to make sure it was over the line and just lost control there. And the Patriots sideline was just told and they are going to send the oh, let's see wait a minute. I thought the field leader was going to come out. He's they're out there already out. Cold, already <laughs> out there. Well they're out for the extra point yes, in their mind yeah. right. <laughs> they're out for the extra point. Alex Kemp continuing the conversation here. After review, the pass is incomplete. So Hunter Henry's denied a second 
touchdown catch in as many drives. And that becomes a big play here in this third quarter. So the folk field goal attempt to be 25 yards. And Henry is all kind of hot. Nick Folk knocks it through, and the Patriots regain the lead. They've scored on six of their seven possessions. And we'll be back in 30 seconds. NFLshop.com for Cyber Weekend Savings. Always great to see some of the Thanksgiving matchups we get. We rarely get New England, Minnesota every four years, but what a terrific matchup it has been. Robert Kraft is here. Six Super Bowl wins, ten conference titles. Son Jonathan, president of the Patriots, no owner in pro football history. With more Super Bowl wins, conference titles. And it was a uh, tell stories on Thanksgiving it just remind you to be reflective Robert Kraft very successful but 23 years of season ticket holder the <laughs> Patriots at old Gillette yeah. Stadium and then as uh, purchased the Patriots and the Kraft family really put this thing in great great hands one move a late decision to bring it out after the kickoff return for touchdown this time he's brought down at the 17 yard line Let's go back to his last score. Yeah, let's take a look at our next gen stats powered by AWS. This is the kickoff return for a touchdown. Ken A. Wanwu. Ham kind of holds Duggar, allows Wanwu to capture the edge and that speed, almost 20 miles an hour down the sidelines. He covered that distance, 115.4 yards, awfully quickly. The difference making play for the Vikings. It's so rare to get one. Almost a dozen years since the last one against the Patriots. Cousins, Justin Jefferson, first call of the second half to the 23-yard line. Should take Jefferson close to 100 yards. Uh, number seven for him on this night. This is a really fun play to look at. It's a naked bootleg, and Justin Jefferson is on the line of scrimmage on the left-hand side and works all the way back across. He's on the line. He's not an off-the-ball tight end. Works his way all the way back. Kirk again does an excellent job navigating the throw and getting into his best player. Here's Dalvin Cook. Went to the inside. And on the inside, it was defense Dietrich Wise shutting him down. So it's 100 on the nose now for Jefferson. In his first three years, his 21st 100 yard game. Two more than Odell Beckham Jr. and Randy Moss, who. Had a 100 yard game to remember on Thanksgiving of his rookie year. I don't mean to look at you, Jason, you when sure I say did. that, but you were there. I was standing right there. He caught three <laughs> passes <laughs> for about 200 yards. He ran right past me on one of them. I'm like, wow, I've never seen a guy faster in my life. <laughs> 350s plus each reception for Moss on that day, his rookie season. This is third and two for Cousins. Able to get the first down. Gain of three with Cook there. Good job to keep this drive going. Jason, you can look away if you want. Tony and I can take it. <laughs> no, I'd like to look away too. I've seen this too much myself. <laughs> Randall Cunningham letting go. And Randy Moss. Five yards the behind the DBs. Here's another one where he gets behind you. And then this is the one you're this talking about. This is the one Jason. I'm standing right there. <laughs> Slowing down. He ran right past me. <laughs> And I can remember Denny Green saying, that's what 4-3 looks like. That's what 4-3 looks like. That's what a rocket ship looks like. <laughs> Cousins with the 28 pressure right in his face. Thielen, the outlet. It's three yards for 31. We have a flag down right where the tackle happened. Is this going to be the second face mask on Jonathan Jones? 
personal foul, face mask. Defense number 31. It's a 15 yard penalty, automatic first down. And here it is. So 15 on that one. It's part of Thanksgiving. Dallas always hosted, but you always knew players would come in and their chance to make a statement on Thanksgiving in Texas yeah, Stadium. Yeah, if you remember that history, Randy Moss was yeah, as good as it gets. Him, right? Cowboys had a chance to draft him. They didn't draft him, and trust me, Randy came back and made us pay. <laughs> <laughs> Like none other. <laughs> That's like Justin Jefferson. He's telling us all the guys right. who went ahead of him and which teams didn't pick him that took a wide receiver. Great history over the years with the receivers here in Minnesota. Cook the carry for three yards. And you talk about history, and of course, it's a what have you done for me lately? Win the Super Bowl, all right, or else. But this Vikings team over the years to the Super Bowl four times famously and losing all four. But it's always been success for Minnesota. They are 88 games over 500 as a franchise. That's the fifth best regular season record. And have gotten close many times. The four Super Bowls, making the championship game after the Minneapolis miracle. Bud Grant, of course, coaching those four Super Bowls. But no Super Bowl banner hanging from U.S. Bank. Cousins the throw, contested. Jefferson was there. Jonathan Jones was there. And it'll be third down. These two have gone at it all night. It's been a, a battle. New England felt like they'll put Jones, their best guy, on Justin Jefferson. And it's been uh, it's been a good go. Jefferson catches the bubble physical. There's another physical one. <laughs> and then, okay, I'll run away from you near the goal line. Yeah. And J Jones has been up for the task. Almost has an interception there. But then when they double him on third down, Justin Jefferson runs through the double and Kirk's on the money, so it's been a good chess match between Kevin O'Connell and Coach Belichick. Third and seven wide open in the middle of the field. It's Jalen Rager inside the 30 to the 26-yard line. Longest reception of the year for the former Eagle first-round pick. Yeah, Rager with an inside release, and you're going to see the defender. They're going to get caught up here. And just falls down. Kirk Cousins with a good read. Big play by Rager. You don't see guys wide open against this New England team very often. A whistle before the snap and a timeout taken by New England with 246 left here in the third. At a price that you won't believe. Where? Lowe's actually. Black Friday is here. Get our best deals on everything for the season while you can. Mark on the left, Ziggy on the right, the Wolf Brothers, the ownership duo of this Minnesota Vikings franchise. And as we ended the break there, you saw the beautiful stadium, U.S. Bank Stadium, that translucent roof. What a show place the Vikings have here. Cousins on the throw, Jefferson on the catch, and a gain of three. The Vikings are getting close to the red zone. Two and a half left in this entertaining third quarter. <laughs> I, I know you're, you're all disappointed that guy wasn't at your table for Thanksgiving, you know? Just, <laughs> how do you ask him to pass the potatoes? Check, sort it, sort it, sort it. And seven, Cousins reads it, throws it complete in the middle to Thielen. First down at the 15 yard line for the Vikings. Great look at Kirk Cousins going through this progression here. He has Jefferson running the out route to the right. He takes a peek at it, and then he works his way right back inside. And there's Thielen. The mind, the eyes, the feet, and the arm working together and throw it to that reliable target in the middle of the defense. Thielen's quarterback friendly. Another good game for the Vikes. 48-48. The 16, Cook. Good penetration will slow him down. Anthony Jennings, the third year man out of Alabama, another Alabama player on this Patriots team, makes the tackle. Mike, I'll tell you, 
I have been impressed with both offensive lines. We've got great pass rushes in this game, offensive line injuries, new units. I thought we'd see a lot of sacks. We're seeing very, very good protection tonight, and that's helped both quarterbacks. One sack in the game. Steve Belichick. Bill's son trying to get the Pats to get a stop here. And that'll be second and long, second and 15. False start, offense number 87. Five yard penalty, second down. It's TJ Hawkinson. For a guy who's oh. so athletic, Hawkinson has an interesting stance, doesn't he? You wouldn't coach that? <laughs> Doesn't exactly look like Carl Lewis coming out of the block. We were talking about, you know, my first year in the league, Chuck Noll, 45 minutes, the first day of every practice, every year was block and tackle by the numbers, and number one was your stance. He would have had a tough time with that. Taking an hour and a half with Hawkinson. <laughs> Cousins flipped the play at the end. Pumping. Now throwing on the run behind Thielen, incomplete, and Thielen took a shot in the back, too, and a flag does come in. Miles Bryant got him. Let's see what that uh, call will be here as they all get together and talk. Flag does come in late at the end of the play. Terry McCauley, is that a defenseless receiver situation? It absolutely is, Mike. He's going down. He makes forcible contact at head neck area. Clearly a foul. And we always think head neck area when the guy's up, right? You're looking for that, and Thielen's going down, but it does fit those characteristics of what you talk about with that so often. So this will take the Vikings down to the 10-yard line for first and goal. And interesting, Kevin O'Connell, who's the play caller as well as the head coach, was over there at the sideline adjusting where the wide receivers were lining up and got the attention of Thielen and Jefferson, who were going to be at the bottom of the screen on this first down. Yeah, bunch type look there. We'll see what they have dialed up. Ten, they're blocking for Cook, who is met by Juwan Bentley. Stop at the eight-yard line. That'll send us to the other end for the fourth quarter. Terrific game going. Pats score 10 in the third. Vikings have a kickoff return through three. Pats by three. Sunday Night Football on Thanksgiving night continues from Minneapolis. After these messages. Dario coverage is brought to you by Geico. Off we go to the fourth quarter. Mike Tirico. Join our time with Tony Dungy and Jason Garrett. Melissa Stark on the sideline. Chris Collinsworth reconnects with us on Sunday in Philadelphia. See the Vikings... According to the numbers of the better chance of winning this game at this point, even though they're down three to start the fourth. On second down, Cousins is hit and does a wow. great job holding on to the ball as the former Michigan Wolverine Josh Uche gets in for the sack. This is Uche rushing off the left side, and he's going against Blake Brandel. Inside move. No help. And this is what we talked about. Normally, that's Derisaw over there. We don't have to help that guy. And uh, it hasn't showed up until now. Big rush, big play. Fantastic rush. And, Mike, you said an unbelievable job by Cousins holding on to that football. That's a sack fumble. Run it back all the way, waiting to happen. So it is third and 17 as Cousins fires to Thielen. Cannot bring it in as he was extended with the coverage by Jalen Mills and we have a 36 yard field goal to tie the game coming up when you get in those situations third and long in the red zone that's where the ball has to go a little pressure around him good job throwing the ball underneath you'd like to complete the pass but you're still preserving the, the field goal opportunity and second down sack was a huge huge play mm -hmm. for that Killer. Patriots defense and we had not mentioned Darisaw, the Christian Darisaw, the left tackle was out because Brandle had done a good job to that point. So from 36, good pass at it by Joseph, and Greg knocks it through. 
We are tied again for the fifth time tonight. The holidays are these matches. WWE superstars compete in two rings set up side by side inside a massive steel cage. It's live Saturday at 8 Eastern, 5 Pacific, only on Peacock. There'll be no wise guy stuff going on in the wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> Our director, Drew Essikoff, the Hall of Famer. He's Maybe been these sitting guys on this. be a tag team, right? There you go. Good. <laughs> Drew's been sitting on that all week, the oh, wise guy that. side by side. And the ultimate wise guy pulls it off. Well done, Drew. <laughs> Touch back there, the 25. You know, Mike, we always talk about Bill Belichick not letting your best person beat him. Zadarius Smith, the best pass rusher. They had a plan for him. Cut block him early. Get rid of the ball quick. Use the tight end, Jason. They had a lot of looks for him. They sure did. A lot of variety to attack him and neutralize him and Daniil Hunter. The biggest thing is getting the ball out of Mac Jones' hands. And when you quiet a guy like that, that can have a contagious impact on your football team. But don't think he doesn't have some fight left in a lot of football to go tonight. See that no quarterback hits for Smith. That's the whole Vikings defense. Matt Jones has not been hit tonight through three quarters. And the 25 well protected again. Ramondre Stevenson the back gains one and Melissa he's going to have to do a lot in the fourth quarter. He sure he sure is because at the start of the second half Patriots running back Damian Harris came off the field. Went into the tent for about 10 minutes ever since then was testing out that right leg running up and down the sideline wincing in pain not happy you see him there he's questionable with a thigh injury he limped just now into the locker room. Missed a game with illness he's missed a game with a hamstring and now the thigh Harris injury plagued first two thirds of this season. Second and nine clean pocket again but good coverage from Eric Kendricks breaks up the pass and sets up third down and Mike sometimes that can happen we've been talking about how quickly New England has gotten the ball out of their hands Minnesota knows this Kedricks is a veteran he's in the middle of your screen he's not going to get real deep in his drop he's going to sit right down and break on the ball that's a good veteran move and a big play for Minnesota and it gets louder here in the fourth quarter in this building Minnesota showing blitz here to see if they come Here they come. Harrison Smith got bumped. Mac Jones on the edge. Sets. Flings. Jump ball incomplete. Tried to get it to Jacoby Myers, but Cameron Bynum with the coverage and a much needed three and out for the Vikings. Watch on the bottom of your screen here. This is Harrison Smith. This is the old John Lynch pressure. Strong safety at D. Here comes Harrison Smith. He gets knocked off. Mack works away from it, keeps his eyes down the field. That is Kobe Myers almost Bynum. came up with another one. Yeah, the, <laughs> Cam Bynum with a big play there. He sure did. Great poise at the ball to knock that thing away. Michael Pilardi kicks to Jalen Rager. Beauty here. Great kick. 55 yards. Rager backpedaling. No momentum. Matthew Slater got one hit on him. And Brendan Schooler, who's been fabulous, he leads his team in special teams tackles, gets one there. Buckle up, 13.06 to go. All even at 26. Percent sure what a turd ducking is. It's a deboned chicken stuffed in a deboned duck stuffed in a deboned turkey with dressing. <laughs> Don't ask me how I know that. <laughs> you see, you cut it like right down here. Can't say I have a lot of experience myself. He made Turducken famous, and the guys at the Butcher Block down in New Orleans are the ones who make it and uh, have provided Turduckens over the years. First down run here inside for about three or four yards with Dalvin Cook, and we thank the guys at the Butcher Block in New Orleans for delivering a Turducken. Have you ever held a Turducken? I've never held one. I've never seen one, but I'll tell you what, it smells it does, great. doesn't it? I'll hold it. You cut it. Get your hand no, in there. Is that how you did it? <laughs> <laughs> right in there. I, I'm not a well, I got a little got bit it. out of there. That's a nice oh, job, right. Coach. <laughs> that was so cool. Was uh, John did that with Al Michaels. Second down screen set up. Got rid of it. Cook is there. What a play again. Raquan McMillan coming across the field to not let Cook get going and minimize the game. The loss, really. 
Back to the 30. That is great hustle by McMillan. He and Bentley chase this down. It looked like Minnesota was going to get something going, but you'll see both of these guys recognize and chase down Cook. He takes a great angle to beat the offensive lineman to the spot. Brings up third and long, and this is where Kevin O'Connell didn't want to be. Too late. Delay. Yep, delay a game. Yeah. Now third and even longer. Timeout. Ooh. Minnesota. Oh. Their first of the half. Hey, Kevin O'Connell got that on the sideline. It's a good timeout by Kevin O'Connell. That's one of your jobs as the head coach on the sidelines is keep an eye on that 40 second clock. And you see Kirk, he has a little urgency, he starts clapping faster. Hey, give it to me, give it to me, give it to me. Kevin bailed him out. And Jason, you mentioned when we were talking with Kevin O'Connell, first year head coach and the play caller, that's a lot to handle. And there have not been those big issues with this team in the eight and two start. It sure is. And I think a big part of it, Coach Belichick mentioned this to us. He did a great job hiring veteran coaches around him to help him with so much of it, to allow him to have the responsibility as a head coach, have the responsibility as a play caller. There's good communication throughout the building. It's really worked seamlessly so far. Gonna go empty here. Cook out of the game. Alexander Madison comes in now next to Cousins. Third and nine. But tighten up now to third and four if that in fact is offsides. But this will require a bit of discussion first. Ball start. Offense number 18. Five penalty. Terry McCauley, you agree with that? I, I do. The wide receiver on the other side of the field is not protected. So he moves before the right tackle does. Right, so there's Jefferson. There. I Terry, I agree with you, but Jefferson's moving on the movement by the defensive line. But he's on the other side of the field. He's I not understand. protected. It's not the first time that conversation's <laughs> happened. Third and 14. Here is Cousins getting out to Hawkinson. Can he get there? No. This is a good tackling New England team. They always are. Kyle Duggar starts it. The fans were unhappy because they saw the replay of the offensive lineman across from the defensive lineman going offside. They didn't see what happened at the top of the screen and have Terry to explain it. I still think New England got a break there, Terry. <laughs> Happy Thanksgiving, buddy. <laughs> but it was the correct call. We've already had one return for touchdown tonight. That by one move of the Vikings, Marcus Jones, who had four kickoff returns or end punt returns at Houston as a rookie last year. The Patriots now move their blocking scheme in. They got rough. See, flag is down. Fair caught at the eight yard line. As Ryan Wright was run into when the pressure came on from Pierre Strong Jr. Is it five or 15? Even at five, it's going to be a first down, Mike. Yep. And they set this up beautifully. They came off the edge, the gunner came in and just Running clipped into the it. Kicker, defense number 35. That's a five yard penalty. First down. Take it to the 41. We watch them come off the edges and leave the gunners alone to come after it. This goes back to my time in training camp with Coach Belichick. He's lined up at 15. Pick out your spot at 11 and a half. Go for that end. You have to know where you're going. He just got a little bit deep there. It's the same rush that Jonathan Jones against Indianapolis yep. blocked. Bring the guy off the edge. The coach said it. The technique you use is critical there, so you stay away from the kicker. Well, it's been advantage Minnesota with special teams tonight and it keeps this Vikings drive going just their second full drive of this second half. Remember they had the long touchdown first time they touched it in the third deep drop Cousins check down his cook Dalvin with a good move to get just shy of midfield and set up second in a couple. 
I will hate to be in that special teams meeting on Monday with Coach right. Belichick. It's <laughs> not going to be pretty. <laughs> Kickoff return for a touchdown and running into the kicker. Not going to be fun. Hudson's back to the air as he throws downfield. It's hanging in the air, but wow. it's caught by Jefferson again. This dude is unreal. Watch Jefferson here on the left hand side. He's got Jones by himself. This is a seven pump. He runs up, pretends like he's running an out route, puts the foot on the ground and runs vertically down the field. Devin McCourty, a great break on it. Look at Justin Jefferson, a big time throw by Kirk Cousins. And talk about making a contested catch in traffic. Wow. 36 on that one and again we're in that same situation Jason big play play clock running down and he has to use a second timeout and Kevin O'Connell's asking for a repump of the play clock but it shouldn't be no no right? reason to this I, I love this Justin Jefferson because you think of all the finesse the skill the speed the hands but this is super toughness right here. It sure is. And, you know, we talked to Kirk Cousins about the fourth and 18 play in Buffalo. And he said when Justin was breaking the huddle, he said, hey, I might just throw this thing up to you. Go get it. <laughs> and I think he did a little bit of that there, knowing that that guy is going to go make the play. And he's got so much physical skill, but it's intangible separate him. The spirit he plays yeah. with, the toughness, the passion shows up again there. Two older brothers. They both played at LSU. Yeah. One a quarterback, one a safety. They prepared him to catch it. And to deal with coverage. And the Vikings are the beneficiaries. Cousins looking. Jefferson was covered. Other side. Thielen. Touchdown. Minnesota. Back on top. The protection is great, but this is the Justin Jefferson effect. McCourty doubles. Watch Devin McCourty here. He is going to look for Jefferson coming across. And that opens up Thielen. And coach, you said it. It starts with the protection. That's an yeah. old time play. Yeah. It's a double crisscross against man coverage. Plenty of time to work through it and find Thielen on the back of the end zone. Joseph adds the extra point. Big plays from the Vikings tonight. The big one to Jefferson gets him down there. Then they had to burn the timeout. Well, if you're going to take a timeout, come up with something good. It was worth it. It was really good. Thielen gives the Vikings a seven point lead. Usually, this division's been dominated by Green Bay, but the Packers running out of time to Philadelphia to see the team with the best record in the league. Packers and the Eagles. Football night starts here at 7 Eastern. Don't forget the Sunday night $700,000 jackpot play for free on the NBC Sports Predictor app. Look forward to seeing Marin Rodgers and Jalen Hurts. Jalen's former Alabama teammate, Mac Jones, now down seven and taking over at the 25 as we go back to the touchdown. Yeah, you talk about the Justin Jefferson effect. My great players impact the game even when they don't touch the ball. Watch how many guys Justin Jefferson impacts. Jack Jones, number 13, he's going with him. McCordy, Jonathan Jones, that helps Thielen, Jason. And again, it goes back to the protection. Kirk looks there anyway, has time enough to work his eyes all the way back across the field. Now Thielen's isolated, and he's going to win that matchup any day of the week. Ten straight for Minnesota to retake the lead. Jack Jones from 25, swings it out to Nelson Aguilar. Good job by Duke Shelley. Had Aguilar by the leg. It brings him down. The gain is just one. And again, Shelley's the fifth cornerback on this team. Cameron Dantzler is on IR with an ankle injury. Andrew Booth started against Dallas. He hurt his knee. But Caleb Evans has a concussion for the buff club. He's out. So really down on the depth chart. But Shelley doing a good job here tonight. Next man up. <laughs> Second and nine, Jones throws to Stevenson. Ramondre down at the 33-yard line. Going to bring up third and two 
under nine left in regulation. He's sticky third and shorts. Third and one you can run it third and two and change. I don't know. You can see Minnesota contesting these Patriot receivers a little That's bit too more many than men they in have the huddle. That the is game. too many men in the I think huddle. You're right. They got away, away with, it. with it. They sure did. The quarterback did back up, but I hear a defensive no, coach next no, to me spot. No, that. no, no. <laughs> Third and one. Three to the right, two to the left. Jones throwing, contact downfield, incomplete. He tried to get it to Tyquan Thornton. Hunter Henry was the one looking for a flag. It was none coming. And it's a three and out quickly here for the Patriots. Been knows little to me, coach, that Minnesota's contesting the throws a little bit more. Mac Jones trying to get down the field a little bit more with this one. The pocket is clean. I just think they their feet tangled. They did. Yeah, I think it's a good call. I was watching Smith and Henry on that replay. Jones wanted the call. And Mac was saying he got hit in the face. The punt by Polardi is not a good one. Last one was great. That one. Not so much special teams. I'm not going to that special team mm. meeting. <laughs> See where it will end up. Ah, it is a 29 yard punt and the Vikings will take over at the 37 yard line. 8 7 to go Minnesota with the lead and the ball. You talk about downfield. This was on the quarterback and a pull and a grab and a twist should have been a flag. And a 26 as well until the Thielen touchdown untied it on the last drive for Minnesota. Cousins in the 35 flips it out there. KJ Osborne, strong hands to pull it in. That's a gain of eight. Wow, and that is close to an interception. No kidding. Jonathan Jones right there. Sure was. Kirk Cousins tries to lay the ball over the defender. Jonathan Jones there one more time and watch the con concentration <laughs> by KJ Osborne. Reaching back and getting it in traffic, Man. securing it all the way to the ground. That's the Buffalo game all over it again. Sure I'll one handed and take it away from you. <laughs> Cousins over 300 yards. The 43, the block by the fullback, Ham. The run by Cook. Gain of a yard. Dietrich Wise, the tackle. So it's going to be third and short here. Mm, third and less than a yard, Jason, against these big guys. Do you pound it up in there and I, get it? I do. I think you pound it up in there. You know, quarterback sneak can work here. Low man wins. Try to drive them off the ball. I'd hate to see them take it away from the line of scrimmage here and throw it. It is a full one, though. Challenge those guys up front. See if they can create a little movement. These guys have had to play a lot in the last few weeks on this defensive line with Christian Barmore. Out the rotation hasn't been the same for the Pats. Can they build the wall on third and one? Cousins again to the edge. KJ Osborne slithers through. First down at the 49 yard line. And let's take a look at the Walmart Plus 4K Sky Cam. Big store for me has been the offensive line. Their best player up front, Christian Darasaw, is out. Blake Brendel steps in. He's been big time. Cousins been comfortable in the pocket all night long, throwing the ball down the field. They've stepped up to the challenge against an awfully good New England Patriot defensive front. The first down takes it under six minutes. Pitch, Cook, one. Bentley the tackle. You want to run the ball to bleed the clock here, but you're going to have to throw the ball against these guys to make first downs, I think. No doubt, but there's definitely some game management going on now. Running the football, bleeding this clock, snapping it late in the 40-second clock. You want to maximize this opportunity. They can come away making this a two-score game in this situation. It'll be tough for New England. Feeling in motion, Cousins back to pass, going Thielen's way. That was red right away. 
Jalen Mills on top of that one now third and long and a huge play as we dive under five in regulation. Yeah, and this is set up wide receiver screen and they just can't get the lineman there you see Cleveland just can't get Jalen Mills. If he can make that block they've got a chance for a big play. But this New England defense reads it well and they pursue. NFL sack leader Matthew Judon has been shut down tonight. He's at the bottom of the screen those red sleeves. Looking like heat. Third and 14. They set up the screen again and Thielen can't get back to it. And it's fourth down. And stops the clock at 429. And gives the Patriots some hope. Really looked like it was a miscommunication there. Kirk Cousins is throwing a quick screen outside and there's nobody to throw it to. You see all the Minnesota offensive linemen getting in front. Yeah I think Thielen is supposed yeah. to be the screen man hard, and he didn't get it. Yeah hard to know. Thielen's down there blocking. Kirk want to throw him the ball. He's ready to block. Nobody's there to catch and run. Ryan Wright. He'll make it tough to catch. Twister for Marcus Jones. He's got it at the 11 and is well covered on special teams. Jalen Naylor comes down and makes a play. So special teams advantage for Minnesota continues to grow tonight. This is the back end of the play, so that was clean. A little acting job there. And this was good. Juan Wu and Chris Boyd have been the normal gunners for the special teams unit. Juan Wu had the kickoff return, so that time Naylor out there, and the Patriots have to go 87 yards. Plenty of time, two timeouts. It's down Jones rifles it. A gain of 14. It looked to be a false start at the beginning there, but I'd Kendrick love to Ford's see that got again, it. Mike, because it sure did. <laughs> Trent Brown's to the left tackle. That's definitely a false start. No doubt Trent was early on that one. Patriots get a break. Take to Stevenson, nothing open, and he just kills it. The player's starting to get downfield a couple of yards there. Good thing he got rid of it quick and avoided the ineligible receiver downfield fly. The RPO, the run pass option, and the Minnesota read it. They took away the slant route. It's going to be Ramondre Stevenson the rest of the way. Damian Harris has been downgraded to out with that injury Melissa told you about earlier. For New England, stick with that same formula. Get the ball out of Mac Jones' hands. Rely on getting some yards on the run after catch. And 10 flips it over to Stevenson picking up some blocks here Stevenson well set up down the sideline he goes Stevenson tough to bring down in the open field flips the field takes it to right around the 28 yard line big play for Stevenson it sure was Mike Stevenson's on the right here this is a chip screen he's going to act like he's chipping the defensive end and then he bounces out there excellent job by the New England offensive lineman getting on the purple shirts to get the screen started Stevenson's 245 pounds look at this guy run out in space we'll mark him at the 33 it's a gain of 40 and a terrific chance now for New England to even this baby up at 33 from the 33 Stevenson the block from Owenu, the offensive lineman, a gain of three on first down. Andre Stevenson, over 100 total scrimmage yards tonight. He is the team leader in tackles, and he's got about 30% of their offense this year in terms of that ground game. Very impressive. Second and seven. Pressure in the middle. Stevenson's got it, and they've got him. That's Aaron Kendricks. The man who recovered the fumble for the tying touchdown, the go-ahead touchdown of Buffalo. With a big play there, and here comes third down. And being down a touchdown in this situation, Coach, obviously they're in four-down territory here. 
So the big thing for New England is positive plays are good. Just make some yards. You can't yeah. make it. The fourth down will be that much more manageable. You can stay with your quick passing here. Need seven, got two to get it. Minnesota showing blitz. That's why Stevenson's up there closer to the center ferrets. Jones in there trouble and sacked, and they finally get to him. Yeah. Hunter pulled the ball down, but he's got it, and Jones is slow to get up. And we're getting to the two minute warning. Sacks late in the game are difference making plays. Ramondre Stevenson is up right next to the center and the guard. Trent Brain by himself, and Trent tries to cut Daniil Hunter. He goes to his knee. Daniil Hunter is a big time athlete. <laughs> At the end of this thing, they could have called Daniil for tripping, but the defensive ends, Hunter and Smith, have been quiet until the most critical down of the ball game. And that is really unusual. I'm not sure what the play call was, but for Trent Brown to try to cut on a deep throw, you just don't see that from offensive linemen. Usually that's a three step drop, get rid of the ball quick. Must have been some miscommunication there, Jason. And one of Daniil Hunter's greatest strengths is his length, how long his arms are. So he's not the kind of guy you want to cut because he can ward off that cut and he's a great athlete to go make a play. And he came up with a big one and a big moment. Fourth and 16 coming up. It's the closest thing we have in the NFL to the feel of a European soccer crowd. <laughs> it is such a great atmosphere in here and now the Patriots and it got to have it. Well, a fourth and long, Minnesota was able yes. to pull off. Yes, and stay Justin alive. Jefferson just throw it up to him. Let's see what New England can do here. This one's fourth and 16. Three in the pattern for Jones, who lets it go deep towards Aguilar, who couldn't oh. get to it. He almost didn't see it in the air at first, then accelerated to get it. He's shaken up on the play, and the Vikings will take over on down. Well, this is going to be Nelson Aguilar on a deep corner route against Shannon Sullivan. He's going to come in here and get out to the corner. He gets bumped off a little bit at the end. And Sullivan's in good position. He's a stop there for a second and then he accelerates yep. the ball. Just stopping his momentum. And for New England, he can't ask oh. for much more in that no. situation to have Nelson Aguilar down the field by himself on Chandon Sullivan. The hesitation, I think, certainly hurt him. Mac just wanted to give him a chance with a high throw. They couldn't connect. The good news, he is getting up. Can I bring in Terry McCauley for a second? Terry, that's an injury, but it's on a change of possession. Is there no time out there? Correct, Mike. There is okay. no timeout charged because there was a change of possession. And here's why that's big, because it means the Patriots can get the ball back with 45-ish seconds if the clock is managed as it should be. And they stop them. So the game is not over yet. But it's Minnesota ball at the 39-yard line. Be CJ Ham leading for Dalvin Cook the back. You gotta get your best runs going here. Patriots all over it. Loss of a couple. Second down here, and Belichick will hold the two timeouts till after second down and after third down. And I, I would take my timeouts here. You never know what's going to happen. I'm stopping the clock as soon as I can. Make Minnesota make a decision. <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> this guy Belichick is second to Shula and wins. Yeah. So <laughs> hard for us to <laughs> comment up here. But I agree with you. I would have banged that timeout. But but he knows that O'Connell was with him. He's not going <laughs> to throw the ball and give you a free timeout, which happens so often these days. Or something like that. Yeah. <laughs> second 11. Cook. 
And now the Patriots will take the second of the three timeouts with 106 to go in regulation. Well, coming up, when our game is done, the fun's not done. As you know, it's Thanksgiving. Mehmet to Brady to Sherm over the years. We've seen everybody, our pal Drew Brees, and the turducken is ready with the turkey legs. Uh, Melissa Stark, are you ready for the Thanksgiving tradition? <laughs> I don't think I'll be partaking, but <laughs> I'm ready to serve them up. That's right. Well, as you said so well at the beginning, you got started with Coach Madden and Al on Monday night, so keeping the tradition alive. No one better than you to wrap this up, but we've got to play here now. We have third down coming up in nine, with the Pats with a chance to get it back, Tony. Now, I see so many of these offensive coaches throw the ball here, but you've got to run the ball and use this last time out. You agree, Jason? I agree completely, and that's really why Coach Belichick held the timeout. Cook stopped timeout Pats will get the ball back with about 53 seconds or so left and no timeouts Jason you said it I mean there are several plays that are inches away from game changing we've got a few of them that happened tonight this running into the punter it was a huge play Minnesota maintains possession there and they come right back and Adam Thielen catches the crossing route that was a huge sequence for the Vikings to go ahead in this ball game and take control of it. There's Hunter Henry at the goal line with the ball that's breaking the plane, but he can't survive the ground. So many plays here tonight. So remember what Marcus Jones did last week. 3-3. Looks like we're heading to overtime. Nobody can score if they kept playing eight quarters. I'm going to say like. it right now, Mike. I would punt this ball out of bounds. Yes. I'm not giving him a chance to return this kick. Couldn't agree with you more, Coach. <laughs> well, here's the rookie, Ryan Wright. To punch this, it away. We've seen this story before. In the middle of the field, it's a deep one, but it's space, and so Jones has it from the one. Can he get through the first wave? No, he can't. Vikings teams Ball's cover out. well. The ball comes out. He stay down. The initial call on the field is down right around the 11 or 12-yard line, but we'll certainly get a look at it. See, knee is down there. Elbows down. Yeah. Clearly. Pat Jones with a good job in coverage. That was really dangerous. It was a deep kick <laughs> in between the numbers. And if he got past that next wave there, that's confidence in your coverage unit. But uh, sure I would have punted it out of bounds. That was almost the definition of out kicking your coverage. Here's oh, a shot. Yeah. <laughs> Now you've got to just defend the sidelines, defend deep, make those balls be thrown in front of you, and your pass rushers, now you've got to earn your money. Yep. Rally and tackle. Keep the ball in front. 89 yards, 53 seconds. No timeouts. Jones in trouble. Sacked. Not a safety. At the one, but receivers are 30 yards away. This will take 15 seconds. Tick, 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 Very tick. Very well tick. done by the Vikings. Defend deep, defend the sideline, and cut that pass rush loose. The guys who were quiet for most of this ball game have shown up in the big moments here late in the fourth quarter. Took 17 seconds from the two. Out of his end zone, Jones. Sideline shot is caught. Boards fighting to get bounds. out of bounds. He could not get out of bounds. Terrific strength by Patrick Peterson to keep him in. And smart play. Smart play. This is it, boys. Third and two. Seven seconds. Jones throws in the middle. It's going to end here. He goes down, but you can't kill the clock. They have no timeouts, and the Vikings will win. And Bill Belichick drafted in the third round in 2008. Beats Bill Belichick. That's cool. Matt Jones played a really good game. 28 to 39. Threw for 382. A career high and two touchdowns. But Minnesota's receivers... Jefferson and Thielen and Hawkinson got one too. And a day after, or four days after a 40 to 3 loss where it looked like 
This team was done. Minnesota comes back against a good defense and hangs up 33. The Sunday night football Thanksgiving night post game with the turkey legs coming up. But first, these messages it. from your local NBC station.